Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to do a little special video here. I was going through all my ISOs and all my operating systems. And I was looking for a couple of Macs because I want to do a few of them that have, you know, an actual ISO, not an app to update. And I found this gem. This is Hazard's 10.6.6, you know, Snow Leopard. Okay. And a lot of you would probably have no idea what this means or probably don't care. And that's fine. Um, I care. So that's why I'm making the video. And the reason why is because this was the original Hackintosh. This CD I have here, you know, the Hazard 10.6.6i. Um, back in the day when you want to do Hackintosh, it was not easy. It was very difficult to be able to get everything you needed and ready to go to install on a Windows-based computer. You couldn't just put a, you know, a CD in. It was always DMG, nothing read it, only Macs can read it, it had certain security checks. There's a lot of things that went down at this. Well, then here comes our boy Hazard on the scene, and he pumps out this, this gem, which is a copy of Snow Leopard that he had, but he also created one in Mac, and he was able to add extra features to it, all the kernels, drivers, and anything else you would actually need to get it up and running at the computer during that time. You know, so as a little tribute to him because unfortunately after this he kind of disappeared you now once he printed this out i think apple pretty much got him and probably killed him for all we know or converted him over you know because honestly that's what i would do if you know if apple called me and said hey you hacked our system here come work for us hey, i'm gonna go work for you i'm gonna do what i gotta do so i don't hire him for that but that's kind of a little bit of history of this so what I plan doing today is I'm going to get this thing up and running for you on, as you can see, VMware Workstation 16. I'm going to show you step by step on everything you have to do. There is a lot of editing you're going to have to do and a lot of errors you're going to see in the video here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're just going to get this thing going here by, you know, deleting this and I will go ahead and create a new one for you. All right. First things first, going to go and create a file, new virtual machine. We're going to go on custom. Hardware is going to be set for 10. Click next. Operating system later. Next. All right. In this case being, we're going to choose Mac OS X 10.7. Next. Give it a name that you'll remember. Next. Okay, now from here, it's just more or less a simple configuration from that. Two cores four gigs of RAM so it can move as fast as possible, bridge networking, SATA, create new, next, we'll keep it at the 40, I'm going to store as a single disk, next, next, and then hit finish. Okay, now there's a few things we're going to have to do here. Go to edit virtual machine settings. Now in here, we're going to go to processors and we're going to virtualize Intel VT or AMD. Make sure that's checked. Go down to CD DVD and we're going to choose our ISO. So in our case being, it will be the hazard ISO that we've downloaded from the description below. Okay. And then we're going to go over here to options down to advance and click on BIOS. Go ahead and click. Okay. Now, before we even actually boot into this, we're going to actually edit the VMX file as well. Um, so what we're going to do here is you're going to go into your virtual machines folder. And then from there, you're going to have a VMX file here. I use Notepad++, but you can open up in any Notepad or any uh, Note editor. Okay. So let me just get that off screen here and then put the next one in. Okay. So from here, we're going to do a few things. And I actually have them written right here. So two things we're going to copy is these two. The CPU1 EXX, blah, 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 and the SMC.version, you know, equals zero. We're going to just copy that right there at the bottom. And what's the reason for this too is the SMC version is required for all Macs um, to just do a version check. And the CPU ID is you're going to get kernel crashes, a lot of kernel crashes with these. Because um, it's not technically supposed to be ran in this you know, environment, you know, not at all. 
So even though we have Unlocker installed and that it can run Mac, these older ones, anything I've noticed anything from 10.10 or no, 10.9 and under usually has some kind of issue, you know, somewhere with a virtual machine. Um, you know, 10.10, .10, which is your 70 and above, I've never had any kind of issues with getting them to run perfectly, but you always have to add the SMC version to it. The CPU ID is usually meant for anything from 10.10 and under. And we're also going to change one more thing in here. So we're going to go ahead and in my case being, I'm just going to go to control F, look for firmware and we can't find the firmware. Okay. That's not a problem. So go ahead and save this because actually what we're going to do is we're just going to copy the firmware over. So we have firmware equals BIOS, copy that. I'm going to go ahead and put that at the bottom here too. Click save minimize that and let's see what happens okay this is perfect go ahead and press enter all right and then what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and just wait for it to go ahead and boot into um the installer okay once you get into the installer here it's going to be very simple and straightforward there is again a couple things you're going to have to do before you can install this so let's get this going uh, choose your language Then after that it's going to give you the information the EULA and telling you here that this is you know for design this DVD is designed for non Apple computers um, so mainly this is not for Apple in any way shape or form again if you know history about hazard he made this so that we can get Hackintoshes working fine go ahead and click agree now, as we can see here, we do not have a disk, so we have to make one. Go up to Utilities, Disk Utility, choose your hard drive, click on Partition, go ahead and create a partition and give it a name, and you'll go ahead and click Apply, click Partition, and that's it. So let's go ahead and close out of that, and we'll go back down here, and then you can see now the drive is available. But we're going to have to do something first before we do this. Because if we just install this directly, it's just going to fail. It's going to never going to boot for us. Nothing but problems after problems. So go over here to customize. And then we're just going to click off a few things. Kernel, drivers, SATA, and patches. You know, we do not need the additional fonts, but you can if you want to. The X11 you can. And if you want to keep uh, the Chameleon booter here, um, you won't need this though. This was meant for if you're going to dual boot a few of them. So if I wanted to put Windows on here as well as Mac on under this, I would use the Chameleon Bootloader to be able to pull that off. But we are just doing a straight install. Go ahead and click OK. And then click Install. And then as you can see here, this will take 15 minutes. This is not like Microsoft where they cannot do math on, at all in their time remaining. Uh, Apple at this time could. So I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead in the video here um, just to save us a little bit of time. Okay, so once it's all installed, you'll be greeted with the additional information. Go ahead and click continue. And now it's time to reboot. Go ahead and click restart. Do not worry about this. You will get this message every time you had to reboot and install this. I cannot do anything else about it, but it is what it is. And it's mainly letting you know that the CPU it doesn't know how to read the CPU. The CPU is a little newer than it's normally known. So in this case, I'm going to press F8 and go ahead and click Mac OS X. So now we're in the actual welcome phase. So we're more than halfway done. This is actually really exciting because I haven't used this in so long. It's so cool. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click continue and go ahead and click continue again. All right, do not transfer my information. Okay, and now in this case being, I have my Apple ID and my password, which I'm not going to care to use, and the same thing with the registration information. See, back then we were able to skip all this stuff, not anymore. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and create our account, type in your name. Okay, type in your password or the password you want to use. Go ahead and click continue. 
type in a hint. Don't have to. I can go ahead and click continue again, but I don't really like it when he yells at me for that type of stuff. All right, now it's going to try to connect to Apple to verify the information that it won't be able to because one, I didn't type any in, and two, we don't have internet, I believe, at the moment. Go ahead and pick your time zone. I'm just going to go here with that. That's good enough for me. I'm in the Eastern. And then go ahead and click go. Now, if you he if you're doing the installation right there and you hear music in the background, um, that would be due to our buddy here, Hazard, adding into that. All right. In this case, being insecure startup items, go ahead and click OK. Go ahead and click OK and keep clicking OK until it's all done. Um, like I said, again, this is really not meant to be doing this, but we're getting closer and closer. So now we got to install the virtual tools. Right click on that and eject the CD for the time being because we try to add it for some reason it tells us there's a CD in use. Install VMware tools. Click install. Wait a minute. Double click the install. Click continue. Install again. Type in your super secure password. Continue the installation. And we're there. So go ahead and click restart. And I'm going to go ahead and jump a little further ahead in the video here for you guys. Okay. And again, as you can see here, we get another fatal CPU error. If you do not want to see that, you're going to see this every time you reboot. So if you don't want to see this every time you reboot, just click do not show this message again and click OK. All right, and then from here, go ahead and click shut down. Go ahead and click power on. F8, jump into our Mac. And here we are. So as you can see here, we have a ready to go. Yep, go ahead and just click OK on them. We have a ready to go 10.6.6 .6 Snow Leopard on a VMware workstation. Now in here, we can go ahead and start doing the upgrades if you want to, but again, we're gonna save that for another video here. But, you know, we went ahead and we took care of this, and now let's go and check out a few things because it's been a long time. So go here to network. Yep, and as you can see here, it is showing up my you know, some internet, so let's see if internet actually works. Probably not. Well, I spoke too quickly. Doesn't show up very well, but it does work. Let's go to YouTube. Okay, okay. It does work. So the internet is actually working. Google is functioning. So, again, there you have it. So we have a fully functioning mostly fully functioning, um, you know, Snow Leopard 10.6.6 .6 by Hazard. Um, so I hope somebody liked the video here. I thought somebody might be pretty cool. I liked the video. I thought it was pretty cool doing this and seeing how, it, you know, we can still get it to work today, even though it's not really the best setup in the world. And again, like I tell everybody here, when you go and shut down, you will be greeted with the shutdown screen, which is what I really like the most. I hope. Sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. You know, but again, if you have any kind of issues ever, you know, rebooting this, because you're going to have a lot of issues rebooting, restarting with this and everything. This is not really, like I said, meant for any kind of real uses except for a nostalgia purpose. You will be doing shutdown guest every time. So you go down, shut down guests. Now, if you're having a problem booting into it, because um, there may be some issues where it's not going to let you boot into it, go to start and then power on the firmware. And inside here, you just want to change the boot sequence to removable. I mean, to a CD-ROM. So it always boot CD-ROM first, then hard drive. Go ahead and do that. And then there we go. Press F8, and then you can go ahead and jump right back into it. 
So I hope this is very helpful to somebody like this. I hope people thought this was very interesting. And uh, I'll catch you on another video. I think my next one was going to be 10.7. And we're going to keep going up until we get to the, uh, the ones that really are easy to install. So we're going to keep sticking to these harder ones. I am currently looking for a 10.5 Tiger that I can put on here, which will be pretty cool. Um, but I guess I'll have to wait and see. So everybody have a good night. I'll catch you later.